Thank you, Sue. Good uh, afternoon, everybody. We thank you for coming. So as Sue said, it's a, um, you know, it's, it's what I would call good busy uh, because we have so much going on this weekend. And it actually starts tomorrow night when we host Louisville and then Thursday night when uh, women's basketball hosts Pitt. But in terms, of the, uh, in terms of the weekend, obviously the Saturday game against Duke, um, it was really the signature sporting event um, you know, in the central New York region in the, in the winter months. Uh, the game is sold out. Um, we will set a new uh, on-campus attendance record um, by, by a few, but it will be a record crowd. Um, game is at 6 p.m. Uh, the gates open at 4. We encourage people to, uh, to leave plenty of time for travel to getting to, uh, to the game early. Backcourt will be open, et cetera, that type of thing. Uh, so we encourage people to, uh, to arrive early. It'll be an unbelievable scene, a great atmosphere. Obviously, that's preceded by ESPN Game Day, which comes back to campus. I think the last time it was here was 2014 when we played Duke as well. Uh, the show is 11 a.m. It's a one-hour show, 11 to noon. Um, admission is free. Uh, the gates for that open at 930. Um, the gates that are open for game day are gates A, B, and C, and gate F for our students. Um, you yeah, know, we want to have, and uh, game day was just in Kentucky last week. They had a great, uh, great showing at the uh, Coliseum in Lexington, so we want to try to match and surpass that on Saturday. Uh, but obviously, any time you get the preeminent uh, uh, pregame show to, uh, to come to your campus, it, um, it just uh, emphasizes the importance and the stature of, uh, of the game on Saturday. And then we followed up. So after the game, get a good night's sleep Saturday because Sunday we're going to do it all over again uh, uh, with two lacrosse games. And then Monday, uh, we host uh, defending national champion Notre Dame, uh, women's basketball. Uh, we're, our goal is to set a new attendance record for a women's game here. The current record is 11,021, which we set for Notre Dame two years ago. I think we are comfortably on pace to break that and break that significantly. Um, the game is at 6 p.m., so I want to emphasize 6 p.m. start time. It's on ESPN2. It's the first big Monday appearance we've made on ESPN2, so you know, that adds stature and relevance to, uh, to our program nationally. Um, gates open at 4.30. We will have an array of, uh, of pregame activities and fun in the uh, backcourt uh, pregame, and we've got some special entertainment planned uh, for halftime as well. I'm not going to go into all the details because I want to give everything away, uh, but I encourage, uh, I encourage our fans throughout the uh, Central New York region. I encourage our students uh, to come out and support um, uh, not only our men's basketball team Saturday, but our women's basketball team Monday as well. And uh, our women are currently ranked 18th. Um, ACC is the most competitive conference in the country in both women's and men's basketball. So it's the opportunity in a 48-hour period to see, uh, to see our teams go against uh, the best that there is. So it's, a, uh, it's an exciting time, an exciting weekend for us, and uh, we look forward to it. And I want to turn it over uh, to Pete, and I want to thank Pete and his team because to do – Everything that's being done here from basketball Wednesday to basketball Thursday to game day Saturday to the Duke game, a changeover for lacrosse, doubleheader Sunday, back to basketball Monday um, is, yeoman's, is yeoman's work. And I just salute and I'm very thankful to Pete and his team for everything they do for our university, they do, they do for our community, and they do for our fans. So, Pete, come on up. So here we go again, right? So <laughs> how do you follow that up? But John's, a, this, and again, it's a great, 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 and amazing partnership with, with Athletics and the Dome Group. So college game day, you know, it was uh, when we were going through the lacrosse schedule, this was something that, that jumped out at me. So when I was working with John and Maury and the team in Athletics that we, you know, we're looking at this Friday night, the Friday night of this week to maybe play a couple of lacrosse games and thought Sunday would look better as you see that Duke game that made sense that this could be a college game day atmosphere and needing Friday, you, you, you need Friday to, to do that event. Um, again, it's like uh, 
talking to everybody that we worked with back in 14 is just amazing. They're so excited to come to Syracuse. This is a really easy venue for them to come to. Obviously, with the, with the room that we have here and the amount of games that we do on TV, um, this building's a, a, a good fit for them. As John said, it is, a, it is a very, very, very exciting weekend, but it's a busy weekend for us. It's been a busy month. I think we've changed the dome over 19 times um, this month between football or basketball and, and lacrosse. So, um, you know, we're, we're really hoping that people, you know, pay attention to the things that we're asking for them to do. It's, it's, we want to get people into the building. We want to make it a great experience for them. So obviously with the 930 opening for game day on Saturday, the, you know, the, again, it starts at 11. It's free to the, to the public. Uh, parking is free in the Dome West area, so we encourage people to utilize that. Um, and then again, we get into the game time, right? So if we can get people here, right, the gates open at four, the earlier we can get fans in the building, the easier it is for us on the movement outside. We've had a, uh, I brought a big group together last week to talk about this event. We treat this event like it's uh, a big major concert or any other major, major football event that we do. After all, we're over 35,000 sold. So um, going through all the logistics of, of the traffic plan and the, uh, and the coverage that we'll have for the game, um, it's, it's important to us. So we have those, those meetings well in advance of this event um, to make sure that things go smoothly. And then we'll come out of the, the basketball game on Saturday and get right into lacrosse. And then we're really excited about Monday. One of the things we really wanted to talk about when we were, when we were discussing this uh, event here today was the women's game on Monday. Um, again, Notre Dame number one. So it's, it's, you know, one of those things where, holy cow, you're going right from one to the other, two huge events, great events. Um, logistically, it's a little bit more challenging for us because um, it is on an actual day where the university has classes. So we're, you know, we're going to work through the parking details with that, and we'll have more to come on that. And then um, again, a six o'clock start, and we're very excited about it to be on TV again on Monday. It's just showcasing a facility that is, you know, the premier athletic facility in the East. And you know, once again, we're breaking a record on Saturday, and the dome just, just, just keeps keeps rolling. It's it's why we're renovating this building. Okay. John, as an ESPN alum yourself, yeah. what's it like to welcome game day to your current job? Well, you know, I'll probably have to treat them to dinner Friday night because I know Seth and Reese and Jay Williams and Jay Billis, you know, they're, they, they've got short arms when it comes to reaching for the check. So, you know, I've already, I've already accepted that. Um, but it's great. They're all, you know, a lot of good friends coming back. Uh, so it would be really good to see them. Uh, but it also just it, it just reinforces the uh, the magnitude of this game, and um, you know we I get it you know Duke's the headliner that's the team that ESPN's fouled all year, uh, but you know what we're you know we're on the front page as well, and um, it'll be it'll be a great atmosphere and it's fun to uh, to have them back and having uh, Dan Schulman come down and Dan's got a son who's uh, who's a student here who's doing great. So it would be great to see Dan, Maria Taylor, uh, tremendous, uh, tremendous talent, sideline reporter, anchor. Maria can do everything. It will be fun to see old friends. Based on your experience of how game day works, what goes into their decision to ultimately choose the carrier dome for this week? Well, I think a couple, a couple things. I think the nature of, of you know, Duke-Syracuse, right? So start with you've got the two winningest coaches in the history of the sport. Who happen to be very good friends, and obviously you know, the Olympic you know, experience that Jim and, uh, and Coach K shared together. Um, I think obviously you know, the the game that we played down in Durham um, has a factor as well. Um, to come to you know a venue like the Dome, um, there is no other setting that comes close to it um, in college basketball. It's an incredibly unique setting, and there's no better big game atmosphere than the Dome. Um, so I think they weigh that. Obviously, they look at other games as well, and we're, uh, I'm just, we're very happy they, they made the right decision and they're coming to Syracuse. You know, something always pops up every year, Chris, that is something like this, but not quite to the magnitude. I mean, this takes me back to, I'll age myself a little bit, when we came out of a, 
dispute with the city where we did U2 and, and uh, Pink Floyd in five days, right? So our first two shows coming out of that. So it reminds me of that a little bit. But what I like about this is the phone calls and the emails that I'm getting from all my friends at ESPN that I just worked with a few years ago on this and just going over the logistics and talking about the bus. Just, there's just a lot of, you know, same thing. John's having the same conversations. Where are we going Friday night, right? Those conversations are, are just great to have. But it, it's, it's, I think this facility, because, you know, we are a football facility that thinks it's a hockey arena, right? It's great to have these opportunities. And this building is, I think, out of the 28 days in February, I want to say we had 20 days of events, which is unbelievable for a football stadium. That could be a year in any other football stadium. What does it look like for like your, your staff? Look like, is everyone just working <laughs> two hours of overtime? Does everyone say goodbye to their family? And, and so <laughs> so the, the month of February, I get a lot of what the hell were you thinking, right? But there's a lot to it. I mean, these sports for this, this environment in this, this part of the country, you know, with lacrosse having that opportunity to get some great games in in February, other venues, you know, other schools don't get that opportunity unless they travel and go down south and play on the road for a couple of games. So they know it. I mean, we do, you know, it was, it's really funny. You go in my office, I, I have two years' worth of calendar out in front of me, right, as I'm trying to schedule this venue. And we're standing over here before this meeting talking about next year's basketball schedule, the blackout dates we have to have for next year. So it's that far out there, Chris. So it's, it's, the team is amazing. There's, there's no better staff in the country than this facility, this, this operation staff. And I'll tell you something else. Last night, I had 62 students here working on this changeover to get us from the lacrosse game last night. And we walked out of here at 1 o'clock in the morning with a full setup. That's amazing. Okay, amazing. But it's the student workforce here that really drives the success of this building. So does that kind of have to happen each night? So we send it. So I have a, a, a person that works for me that's just constantly pushing out that schedule to the student uh, email base, and it's over 400 students that we're emailing. We encourage them to tell us, "Hey, I can't make it. That's okay. We need to know that you can too." But it's you know that that's what what drives it. So is it a different group of students each day? No, you know we have a really good base of students. It's a mixture between uh, Syracuse University students and ESF students. Um, it's word of mouth. Um, occasionally, we'll table at the Shine Center. We'll table at ESF over at the Gateway Center, and it's it's great. Are you figuring there's going to be a new record? Can you give us a, a better? Are we, getting, are we talking thirty six thousand? And, and I also know it's been talked about for putting the court in the middle of the stadium and, and selling it out fifty thousand. Is that ever going to happen? So <clears throat> let me ask the let me answer the first question. So so we're at a record, and John and I were just talking about this earlier because I was talking to a Daily Orange student the other day about the record, right? So we added f eight seats to the official table this year. I don't know if you noticed, there's four people that sit by me, the visiting team, and then at the other end, there's four there's four other seats, right? A lot, a lot of all the venues are selling seats by the, the benches. It's common. And John came to us uh, over the summer and said, "Is this something we can do?" Of course, we're gonna we're gonna we'll we'll do whatever we can. Um, so, so, so that was an easy decision. The court in the center, I probably received no less than a dozen emails about people asking me about this game. So I've been through this, you know, many years, right? I get the same question. But to me, what we got in, when we put it out there years ago was, gee, I've been a season ticket holder for the Dome since it opened. You're going to move the court to the center. My seat's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same view. You know, I paid all this money all these years to be a season ticket holder and support the program. So what my response to that a lot of times is that almost needs to be a one-off, like a concert type of event, where maybe in the ACC, one of those challenge years where we bring a big opponent in here and John and I create an atmosphere that the court needs to be in the center. We have many different manifest layouts of what it could be. So I'd, I mean, I, I hope before I'm, I retire, I would really love to do that event. With, I'd love John to be my partner and we'd do a big event in here with a basketball game like that. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, that's, that's, it's, it could. <laughs> so we're saying a minimum, you know, when somebody says that the attendance has changed a little bit, those are, where do you find those seats? Well, we found them this summer, right? Yeah, exactly. But I mean, you'll, you'll see people hide up. You'll, you'll put people in, in different places than you would uh, another game, right? So this morning, myself and Tom Benzel, who works with me, and, and, and Mark Potter in the box office walked the arena. We actually went up in seats and, and sat in seats that we've sold to make sure that you can see wherever the person would be on that court, wherever the players would be. We do that before every big game like this, Andrew. It's, it's important. We don't sell any um, obstructed view seats here. So 
Um, we went through that today to make sure that <clears throat> the manifest matches what we've what we've sold. Give us a little behind the scenes of what will happen to, to set up for game day. Obviously, the building is very wired, and you indicated mm -hmm. it's easy for ESPN to, to come here. But you mentioned Friday being such an important day in order to pull it off. What's going to happen Friday that people won't see until they flip on their TV Saturday? So the crew comes in on Friday. They, they're the actual crew. A lot of them that are working the game on Friday are working the game tomorrow night at Duke and. Um, North Carolina. So we've been talking daily. So they have a crew that comes up, just a game day crew. It's about 65 people. Um, and actually uh, talking to those that, that group this morning about credentials and about logistics um, and understanding the amount of cameras. So you're going to see a camera that we haven't never done here before. It's called a spider cam. I've been working on that for two weeks, trying to understand how we can make that work in this facility. So I'm really excited about that. And this is a big, big production. Um, you notice across the country, a lot of these TV productions at these sporting events have gotten smaller, you know, with the ACC network and coming in. You don't see it. This is the first time ESPN's been here for a basketball game all year. Like in February, typically they've been here many times. So they're very, very excited to be here. This is an important show for them. So they're bringing a big package. So when I looked at the amount of cameras, I was talking to DJ um, this morning on the phone saying, are we thinking we're using every one of these drops for the game? And he's like, no, Pete, a good portion of those will go away after game day. But um, all that equipment's got to come in, sound, lights, the set, all the wiring that surrounds that. The nice part is they travel in a, in a package. It's a package deal. So the show crew and the, and the game day crew, are it's two trucks, an A and a B unit, and they travel together. I can remember back in, you know, early, it was maybe in the 2000s or 90s, we had a, they would do a whole separate set where we built a stage at aisle 101, and it was a whole different production. We had two full production crews. Now it's much easier to do. And Sue and I were just talking about the bus. So the bus is coming on Friday. They like you to park in a prominent place where people can see it. I think it's going downtown, I heard, on Thursday night or Friday. So that's kind of cool, too. What should fans know if they want to come to game day? That, uh, again, the, the doors open at 930. The show's at 11. It's, it's free to the public. It's no, no charge. Um, parking is free also in Dome West. And we'd love to have people here. We, I would really like to have a good, good showing here. I mean, uh, again, you, you know, the, they, they help us as people come in with the banners and all the different posters that people make, because it's, it's just a great atmosphere, you know. People should treat it like two different events, though. If you're coming to game day, you need to kind of believe before the, the crowd can come in for the game. Kind of speak to that, that transition of what people should so that So that's, that's actually a good question. So at noon that ends, you know, we, we are going to ask people that they, they can't leave their car in the lots if they don't have a pass, because the lots in the West are sold out. They're all pre-sold to our season ticket holders. So again, as we when last time we did it in 14, same message, we'll roll them out. The students, of course, we haven't talked about it all, are going to start camping out right after the Louisville game. So we've been working with Otto's Army. They've got that, that whole process set up. We're going to allow them to go back out and either get in line. If the weather's bad, we'll do what we did in 14 and bring them in and actually let them get in their section. And the athletic department, maybe John can speak to this, is, has a whole bunch of um, activities for the students to keep them engaged in the student section till tip off. So we're gonna do things on the court with them. There's some uh, kind of a mini pep rally. We're gonna feed them here through the dome to keep them engaged. So we need that student engagement. Okay. I should know this, but I don't. The, the temporary bleachers, where do those go for lacrosse? How do you get them out of there? Where do you store them? The 28 that ro go around the bowl or the big nine that roll back? The big nine that roll back. So they actually are pushed with a forklift and zigzagged into their position all the way back into the where the concession stand is back there. We pull all that equipment out, and then we keep some of the smaller bleachers in. That's how we're able to do these changeovers so quickly is we don't have to take so much out of the building. This is a big crowd for basketball, but you're not, uh, you're used to having numbers like this for concerts or even football. This isn't an unprecedented chaos, I should say. I mean, you're prepared to, to take in as many people because you do it other times of the year. Right, we're going to run traffic in, in two directions, both lanes in up through Skytop because we know that the bulk of the, the, the tr parking is going to be up at Skytop. So we've worked through that with the city police. We've rented four um, directional big LED signs to put around the city to guide people into the lots. It's important that once they come off 81, they go the right way to get to Skytop. That's very important to us. We've redeployed some of the police resources uh, on the traffic detail. To, to We know what happens here in Dome West, and people are really good about that. So it's the other areas where we need help. So again, we'll have over 40 buses to move our staff and, and have plenty of buses for our disabled fans as well. You know, again, everything is, you know, we, we changed our security 
policies a lot this year with the walkthrough metal detectors and the clear bags. So we'll, we'll all day on Friday, anybody that works here as they come in, you'll go through a detector, you'll go through the, you'll go through the mag, mag, magometers. And again, same thing for game day. It's a typical dome entry. You'll, you'll go through all the security measures. Mm -hmm. What is comfortable look like? How many seats do you feel like you can break it by? How many people? Uh, more than eight. <laughs> 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 um, I, think, I, think we're, uh, I think we're on track to, uh, to, to take that number and beat it significantly. Significantly. So I'm not, I'm not prepared to share a number, but it, it, it'll be, uh, we, we got a chance to have something that can be really, really special on Monday night. Really special. Yes. How about Saturday? Any clues on a number? Um, as we know, I was Pete and, you know, Pete and I worked hard in the summer to sell the additional eight. <laughs> the, the key, the key is, is, and Pete alluded to it, is we, want, we don't want to sell anything where you can't see all four corners of the court, right? We're not, you know, not going to do that. Um, but, again, it, it's, and I know it's, it's impactful, and I know our fans like it, but we will set a record. Yeah, yeah, student association. So yeah, our marketing team, um, they've been great with, uh, with, with Gufrin and, you know, the student association, student government leadership team. You know, they've been awesome. Um, our corporate partners have been great regarding the Notre Dame game on Monday night. So it's really been a, you know, a collaborative effort across the university uh, for Saturday and for Monday and also across uh, with our corporate marketing partners as well. Oh God! I mean, dozens. Yeah, you know, literally. Uh, but yeah, you know, we want we want one unified message, which really emanates from, you know, from athletics. And again, you know, the, the simpler the message, the more effective, right? All right, you know, it's Duke. It's game day. It's sold out. Boom! All right, get here early. Enjoy everything. Monday, we want to set an attendance record for the women's game, national TV. Let's show the nation we're a great basketball community. Just not a great men's basketball community, but a great basketball community. That's the message. Um, I've not, yeah, I've not seen anything this morning on Pitt. So it's a huge weekend for the university and, and for the fans as well, and for the two teams that are playing. What kind of uh, Joe Namath like guarantees can you give us? Uh, None. <laughs> None, Mark. What can you guarantee? What can I guarantee? Yeah, it'll be, you know what, you'll, you will have, I think, two memorable um, events. And part of what we do is we're in the business of making memories for our fans, for their families, for our students. And uh, so come Saturday, come Monday, and uh, you're going to make some memories. And hopefully they're really, really happy memories. Final question for Mark, or for uh, John, or for Pete. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead first. Uh, Pete, the, the, so what is the most time-consuming part or the most difficult part of the transition? Is it, is it getting the court constructed and on and off? The floor covering, it, it takes a really long time. I mean, that's that's the bigger part. We have a group that kind of, the group of students that kind of has been working, putting the court together and apart. It's it's funny. They they get in their little niches and they like to do certain little aspects of the changeovers. But the floor is a big process. You're covering 87,000 square feet. We do it pretty quickly, but it's over 175 pallets that need to be brought out onto the floor, and it's it's that's that's a tough part. Yes. Yep. Yep. It's, it's exactly right. How many pieces of the court? How many pieces of the court? Well, it's you can do the math. I think it's 14 rows times 15. So. Is there a crowd limit to game day? A size of people? No. We'd like Still we'd like a lot of people here. What happens if you're parked in that lot after game day and you're still there? Well, we're going to really encourage you to move your car. You know, we're going to be down there. We're going to hand things out as you. We're going to have parking there to, to kind of. In, you know, inform people of what the what our challenges are. Um, we'll we'll try to work with that person to get them and the people to, to move their cars. We typically don't have a problem with it. it. There's so much time between the games; it's never been a problem before. Is there a ballpark figure as far as a windfall for the university this weekend? I mean, with all these people coming through the turnstiles and buying their dome dogs and whatnot, is there some kind of figure you can throw out? No, I'm not going to give you a figure mark. I mean, obviously, it's a great weekend for the community. You know, it's not only the university, but, 
you know, and obviously it's a good, terrific weekend for athletics, but also for the community. Community. I mean, the number of people that will be coming in from out of town, you know, the business that will be transpired at hotels, at restaurants, et cetera, that type of thing. It, you know, um, it's it's a great, you know, it's a great economic weekend for for Syracuse and Central New York. There may be a couple. <laughs> there may be there, yeah. You know, a lot of times those those come together literally like the last minute, you know, or you know, a couple hours before tip off. But um, there's there's the potential of having a few celebrities here. Yeah. One more question. I know we're way over. From it's your okay. ESPN experience, tell fans what they should do. Should they bring creative signs? Should they be decked out in orange? All of the above. Well, it's an orange out, so no, you know, everybody's got to be an orange. So that's, you know, because you get 35,000 people in orange, you want to talk about a visual, you want to talk about a memory, that will be a memory. Um, so that's, you know, that's number one. I think, you know, for game day, you know what, we want our kids to have, we want them to have fun, uh, but we also want everybody to be, let's be respectful, let's be responsible, and, uh, and showcase, you know, showcase our school spirit. And the last, you know, I think it's the last three years, we've been the number one uh, uh, spirit school in the country and there's no this is a great opportunity both Saturday and Monday you know to showcase the passion of uh, a Syracuse spirit thank you very much thank you everybody. thanks everybody